Hey, good morning. April 10th, Monday morning, driving to work, taking off. So here we go. Um, so I've been awake since 4 a.m. It is now 6.34 a.m. I'm not recording this on IG Live. I'm going to upload this to YouTube. Um, hopefully somebody will find it after I'm gone. Well, <laughs> after I'm gone um, so I don't know what to say is, is, it, is it another midlife crisis maybe I don't know I'm gonna recap to you what's happened in the last couple days not bad nothing bad um, it's just I have to change my mindset about a couple things so a couple weeks ago we had a dinner the network had a dinner that's uh, Maurice me Maurice and a bunch of other people and uh, you have people perform, right? They perform, you know, they're they're not on stage per se. They're in the room with the rest of us, <laughs> but they're on stage in the in a, a informal sense, and they're singing. You know, Bridget Bridget was singing, singing. She did a very good job. You know, I've talked about Bridget before. A very beautiful woman. Um, and um, I never saw her sing. I've seen her belly dance. <laughs> I never saw her sing. And then uh, some other people performed as well. This big guy, this huge dude, he sang, he sang like friggin' Luther Vandross, okay? And then uh, there was like two more acts, but they all did a very good job. And I'm watching all of this, I'm sitting there and I'm dressed to the T, okay? Like, I got my whole suit on, I got a hat. <laughs> I was looking really dapper. And, um, I'm sitting there and I'm enjoying the performances, but I, when I left, and I was probably one of the first ones to leave, I left a little bit upset. I left a little bit angry because I wasn't performing. And um, of course, I'm not gonna sing the Luther Vandross songs or anything like that, but it's just the fact that I'm not living that life. It was like, that's what pissed me off. These guys are doing what they're, they wanna do. Like they're, they're living that life. You know, I, want, I don't want to say living their best life, but they're living their best life. The issue with, with singing, like I said before, there, there's two issues with it, right? Uh, I relate. Uh, I'm 50 years old. Tracy Ellis Ross, 50 years old. Daughter of Diana Ross. Who's been on TV. She's been on TV. She's performed. She's, she, she has her own hair brand, et cetera, et cetera. She's been, you know, she's talked, she's talked to people, done interviews and whatever else. She was scared to sing. She was scared to sing. Can you believe that? But I feel I feel just like her. It's not that I'm scared to sing. It's not that either of us are scared to sing. But we have this, uh, I don't know, this thought process that we shouldn't be singing. Like, like why are we going to sing? Like, you know, who's going to listen to us? Something like that, you know. And so I know that I can sing, you know. And I'm not telling you, I'm not, again, I'm, I'm not the best singer in the world. I, I do a good job. Like, I can hold a note, you know what I'm saying? I've I've been on stage with, with better singers, you know, Sean uh, Sean Christopher uh, Leslie. I can't remember Leslie's last name, uh, but I've been on you know I've been on stage with other performers, you know, who know how to sing. But I I feel like I'm not I'm not living my best life in pursuing that career. But the thing about that career is it's so friggin' flooded. Everybody wants to sing. I don't. You know, it's like uh, I don't want to be like everybody else. I don't. That's why I'm in rock. That's why I'm a black guy singing rock music. Because you're not going to see too many of that. You know what I'm saying? Of course, there's black guys already doing that, but you see too much of that. How many? How many guys do you see like that? You know. So. So. Last starting this past Thursday, today's Monday, right? I had a three day weekend. I went to the doctor to check get my eyesight checked out because of my diabetes. This is after this is like after three months. I think in January, or February. I think this is, yeah. However long it took to get my eyes checked, and uh, they're okay. Like my eyesight was blurry back then. It's better now. Uh, but they, you know, they want to stay on top of it. They want me to stay on top of it, and I'm, you know, this has been a struggle for a while now. I've been. <sighs> I've been at war against it, but at the same time, it's it's a frustrating battle. It's an uphill battle because my blood sugar has only been gone to like 100 
Like it's only been normal for twice, like twice within the past four months. Twice, four months. How many days? 30 days multiplied by four, what is that? 120, 120 days. I've only got my sugar down to 100 twice in all those days. So two of those days, out of two days out of 120, I finally got it down. Damn, you know what? I took the wrong route. I just realized that. <laughs> I just took, I'm supposed to be on 71st, so I could, I could turn here, I guess. What was I saying? So I only got it down. So it's a frustrating battle. Okay. So I've, I've kind of, kind of had a moment of clarity. With, uh, with the performances and me being angry about not pursuing my dream, right? It feels like it's a regular dream that everybody has. Everybody, everybody, every black folk, every white guy, everybody, they want to sing. <laughs> everybody wants to sing and dance and perform. We, want, we all want to be rich and celebrities and all that stuff. I don't necessarily want to be a celebrity. I just want the money. That's all I really want. But again, it's a floated market. So Thursday, I went to the doctor. And then I went to go see a movie. What was that movie? Dungeons and Dragons. With Chris Pine and uh, Michelle Rodriguez. It was cool. It was funny. I was I was probably the only one laughing in the theater. There's maybe like six or seven people in the theater. I don't know why they weren't laughing. There were some funny parts of the movie. <laughs> anyway... Uh, again, this is April. What well, is this? April tenth, two thousand twenty-three. Because again, I don't expect people to see this until much later, um, or hear this. Um, look about it. Everybody speeding past me like they need to be somewhere. So I saw a movie, and then um, that night we had there was a karaoke at the Cove. Is it the Cove Lounge? The Cove Lounge. It's right there on Fifty Fifth. It's on Fifty Fifth in High Park. And uh, Milton was there. He was he was DJing, and then uh, of course Maurice and Kareem was there. And we rarely see Kareem out, but uh, she was there. And Charlie Charlie Murphy showed through. Yes, Charlie Murphy. He came through, and so uh, I got up on stage and I sang. I sang um, "Dead and Bloated" by Stone Temple Pilots. And uh, before I got there, I practiced the song on the way there in the car. To make sure it sounded great. To <laughs> make sure it sounded awesome. I'm gonna turn this around for a sec. I blew it out the water. Like I like everybody loved it. Everybody there loved it, right? Bunch of strangers. I got up in front of and I was, you know, my hand was shaking and shit. I hope they didn't see that. But I blew it out the water. And then um then Maurice and Kareen left after a while. Charlie left because he was driving them. So I decided to do another song, which was Alice in Chains. Man in the box, man in the box. I did not hit the notes right on the on the hook, so it didn't sound great. This karaoke, not everybody's expected to sing great in karaoke. The trick to karaoke, just to let you know, you need to know the words before reading the prompter, because your brain is trying to process what you're reading while you're singing. You're trying to do two things at a time. Know the words. Look at the prompter every now and then just to make sure you get the words right. That's what I did, but know the words. <laughs> so know the song. That's that's the trick to it. So anyway, I didn't sing Man in the Box that quite right. I've done it in the past. I've hit it right, but I didn't do it right that night. So I was a little disappointed in myself, but I did it. Like I got up on, on stage and conquered that, that uh, fear. But the fear was, of course, not singing the song right because I consider myself a singer. I don't just consider myself... A guy who sings karaoke every now and then, right? I consider myself an artist, just like my mom, you know, just like half the people in my family, yeah, half of the people in my family, my mom's side of the family anyway, they're gifted. Everybody's gifted in some in some artistic way somehow. If it's not singing, it's, they know how to draw, paint, whatever. If it's not that, it's athleticism. Both me and my sister have that in spades. So... What was I saying? This girl next to me distracted me. <laughs> what was I saying? So I did that. And and it was cool. I was cool with it. So then Friday. What happened Friday? I went to Montez. 
No, I slept most of the morning. I didn't really get to see Montez until like three in the afternoon, four. I got to this place about four. So I'm in Evanston, of course I gotta, I had to stop by the Jamaican bakery and get a patty. And then um, um, I went somewhere else. I got like a slice of pizza. And that was it, like the chicken patty and the pizza. I'm sure I ate when I was at home. Um, but I spent most of that time, and me and Montez, you know, I just hung out at his house and we were playing video games. We were playing Midnight Suns for the most part. At some point I fell asleep. <laughs> Cause we were going back and forth with the, with the control, right? Because you can only play, it's only one player. And then we ended up, like, it was like, I got there at four. I didn't leave. Well, I didn't leave. Like, we were doing what we were doing up until, like, 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night, you know, playing the video game. And then we started watching uh, some movie. Uh, what is it? Amer Once, a time upon Once Upon a Time in America. Robert De Niro. So we, so we were watching that. We didn't even watch the whole thing. Like we, we maybe we watched like the first thirty minutes, and then I ended up falling asleep. You know, I slept on his couch. And then I woke up that morning, that next morning, which was Saturday, and um, it was like seven thirty a.m. And I text my sister to see if I could come through, which I did. So I saw my sister and my niece for a little while, and we were just chatting. And it just so happens, you know, my my aunt Jean passed away a week ago. I think it's been a week. I think it's been a week now. Don't quote me on that, but it's, it's been the past couple days. So my mom went to go, my mom took a plan to go see her a couple days ago. Like she went to Belize. Um, all my other aunts were already there. My Aunt Carol, my Aunt Doyla, my Aunt Diane. And um, my mom went there and my sister's telling me the story that my mom forgot her phone. So now we're, so now me and my sister are going to, you know, we're doing a little back and forth. I'm like, how did you forget your phone? Like, you don't forget your phone. <laughs> like, that's, that's not something you should be doing. And, of course, uh, my sister was defending my mom. Like, you know, well, you know, she's human and then things happen. I'm like, yeah, but you don't forget your phone. Like, <laughs> like, like the whole thing is, I know, I know my mom. She does things, everything last minute. And that's how she forgot her phone. She didn't just forget her phone. It's because, it's because she does everything last minute. That's why she forgot her phone. And you know that's not new. I was like, man, I was, I was like, I'm so glad I didn't have to take her. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because that would, you know, that would have annoyed me. You know, it's like, really, you forgot this? You know, but whatever. And the thing with that is, you know, the procrastination, like that was a big problem with me. It's still a problem with me. It's just not. It's not. I don't procrastinate. Procrastinate on things that are important now, right? Like my job, <laughs> like like being on my job on time. Or, being to the doctor's office on time. I was late. I was late to the friggin' eye appointment. It's not that I, that I uh, I didn't procrastinate per se. I got ready ahead of time and everything, but I was still like five minutes off, and that ticked me off. I was like, no, nah, I shouldn't have been late. You know what I'm saying? I'm a grown man. Like I should have left on time. I left, you know, five minutes late, and I should have left on time. You know, we have control of certain things. You know, our time is one of them. And I want to, you know, be on top of that. And, and it, it bothers me when when other people are not considerate. Like, you know, like if somebody's picking you up, you need to be considerate of that person picking you up. So be on time. If you told them to come pick you up at a certain time, be ready. Be at the door. <laughs> Don't be, oh, yeah, I'm still getting ready and I'm still packing and I'm still this. I'm still No, be ready. You ask that person to pick you up. So anyway. Getting back to what I'm saying. So, so again, so, me, so it's me and my sister. We're having a little talk about that. So I'll, I'm trying not to argue with my sister. I don't want to get argued with my sister. So I just, you know, I kind of drop it. I kind of drop the subject. And then we go to, on to talk about something else. My sister seems so quick to like, I don't know. I don't want to say fight, but that's what it is. Like, she's quick to fight. Like, and I know she didn't want to fight with me. But it's like she's so quick to do it. It's like it makes it hard. And that's why I'm recording this. It's part of the reason I, I, why I'm recording this. It's like I have no one to talk to. Yeah, I got friends, but and I, you know, I listen to most of my friends. I'm a good listener, but nobody's a good listener for me. <laughs> Nobody really wants to sit and listen to me. And then I don't want to whine. I don't want to whine and complain. But at the same time, I'm 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 feeling very lonely. <laughs> I'm extremely lonely. 
And so it's like, I might have to record this just so people could know what the hell I was feeling. But they're gonna know this after I'm dead. Like I expect these people to see this on YouTube after the fact. They're gonna look and say, well, I wonder if Keith recorded something. Oh, here it is, look, look, he recorded something. <laughs> it's like, it's so sad, man. Sad, sad, sad. So, so after I leave my sisters, I, you know, I was there for maybe an hour, if that. Um, I left, and I had, mind you, it's, it's like a three-day weekend. Like Thursday, normally Thursday I would be at work, but I, I had to take that day off. So I'm having a three-day weekend because my days off are Friday and Saturday, right? So I'm really relaxed now. It's a, a Saturday, and I don't have to be anywhere in particular. And I'm leaving my sister's house at like, what, 8.30, 9 a.m.? No, I think it was like more closer to 10, maybe. So I leave there. I really don't have anywhere to go. Like, I'm going home, but it's like, it's a, it's a leisurely drive. Like, I have no worries. I don't have to be anywhere at a certain time. You know what I'm saying? I was, it was just a relaxing drive, and I hadn't, hadn't done that in such a long time. So as I'm driving, I, I decide at some point, I'm not gonna take the expressway. Like, I took the expressway up to a point, and I decided, I was like, you know what? Let me just go the scenic route. And I got off, like, at Diversity, I think, coming from my sister's, which is like, she's like closer to Dempster. So I got an expressway on Dempster, got off at Diversity, and I just, I was just taking a leisurely drive down Western, Western, Western Avenue. And I'm um, coming past Western, and there's this trail. It's, I think it's Bloomington, Bloomingdale, Bloomington. I can't remember, but it's a trail. It's like a, it's, it's this trail that goes past Western and goes down to Ashland. It's like from Ashland and it goes west to maybe Ash, uh, maybe Kedzie, maybe. I, I don't know how far it goes, but it's, it's a park. They call it, a, it's called a park. I took pictures of it and everything. And, um, but it's this trail, it's just this long trail that goes straight down the middle of Bloomington. It's right on the side of Bloomington. And uh, it's beautiful. And w so I'm walking, and you know, there's a bunch of people walking too. There's people walking, riding their bicycle, rollerblading, walking their dogs, jogging, the whole nine, okay? <laughs> you know, down this trail. Uh, and it's, I, I don't know, maybe it's like 20 feet wide, I think. If, if I was to judge it, 20 feet wide, and then like I said, the, the length from Ashton all the way down to Kedzie. I'm assuming Kedzie. It might be. I'm not. I'm not positive on that. But it was a beautiful walk. Why was it beautiful? Because it was sunny out. The temperature just had just gotten nice. Like it felt like it was 60, 70 degrees. You know, we just got out of the cold front. You know, out of winter. It's April. You know, we're at the beginning of April. And I'm looking at all, I'm not just looking at the trail. I'm not just walking down this trail. I'm looking at all the condos, town, townhomes, all these beautiful houses, buildings that were built. Some of them are old, but some of them are brand new or they look new, put it like that. They were awesome. And I'm walking, I'm like, wow, like, I wish I could afford to live here, you know? And I thought, you know, of course, I'm already coming there, I already know that not not a lot of black folks are living out there you know even it's even on the trail i didn't expect to see many black folks and i didn't i saw maybe four <laughs> i saw maybe four black folks other than myself you know the, the rest of them were white you know what i'm saying white and I'm, I'm not talking there was a good mix of like oh there was mexican or spanish or whatever no it was mostly white maybe one indian maybe one asian you know what i'm saying and I was like, and, and again, just like with the with the uh, with the um, performances, the singing, all the artists singing, I got pissed again because I'm like, I'm like, why why can't we live here? Why can't I live here? Why aren't there more black people here? Of course, we know the you know the reason, the real reason. But it's like you know we shouldn't be shut out from stuff you know. But mostly, particularly me, it's like I could be living this life. Why aren't I living this life? I deserve to live a good life too. I deserve to to have nice things. I deserve to have a nice home and you know to walk this trail. This that was the first time walking that trail. I had seen that trail years ago when I was still married. I was like, oh look at that. That looks cool. Now this is me driving in the car past it. I would drive past it every now and then. I'm like, man, I want. I wonder what's on that trail. Well, that, that was, you know, a couple days ago, that was my first time seeing it. I'm 50 years old, you know what I'm saying? 
I, I got married like when I was 32. So it took me all that time just to just to just slow down enough, just to chill out enough, just to go find this trail and walk it. And it was cool, you know, but it was like it was my life has been so on the go, like so, you know, this job, this this uh, rat race, you know what I'm saying? Like that was the first time I really just took time to just take off and just walk. And I walk all the time, mind you, don't get me wrong. But just to just to see that trail in particular, like I parked the car and I just get to walk and I didn't have to again, I didn't have to be anywhere at a particular time. It was just on a whim. I, I, I did that on a whim. It wasn't planned. I just drove past. I was like, you know what? Let me go. Let me go. You know, let me go check this out. You know, and it, I'm glad I did it. But I'm looking at the houses. I'm like, man, like these are really nice. Like I would like to live in this place. It was maybe a week or two ago. It was the same thing. I took a walk around. A, I can't remember what neighborhood it was. It was it was some beautiful neighborhood. I just can't remember. But I just remember just just seeing the houses. It could have been Evanston. I don't know. I don't remember. But I was looking at these houses. I'm like, wow, like this is really nice out here. Just looking at these houses and stuff, and I was like, I was like, how come we don't have this? You know? How come we can't we can't live like this? You know? It's not like I don't work a good job. Yeah, I work a job, but the, I guess the people who live there don't work job jobs, or maybe they got six figure jobs or whatever. I'm like, you know, I want so much better. I want to have so much better, and not just for me, but for my family as well. It's like everybody's struggling. I go to a job where where I just make just enough just to pay the rent, you know, pay the utilities and watch Netflix, you know. I'm not buying a bunch of new stuff. You know, my money mostly goes to buying food. And so I'm looking at that. So I'm I'm enjoying the, the all these houses and all these townhomes and. But it's pissing me off. I'm like, it's pissing me off again. Like, you know what? We we deserve better. You know, Kevin Samuels, man, he had a vision. And, you know, all these women, oh, he, he, he hates women. He, uh, they didn't understand. We understood. Men understood him. We understood him. We loved the guy. But one of the, he had a video that's, that talked about we belong. And I talked to, I mentioned this before in, in, on Instagram. We belong, you know? We don't have to be outsiders. We don't have to be outcasts. We don't have to be orphans. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, we belong there. And that was him talking to black men in particular. Like, no, you belong there. Like, like these guys don't have anything over you. They're not smarter than you. They're not better than you. You belong there just as much. You know? I live on the south side of Chicago where the rent is cheap right now. Uh, but, you know, I deserve to live in one of those friggin' townhomes. And to be honest, I would rather have a house with a big yard. That was one thing that they were missing. They didn't have, not too many of them had yards, you know, um, where you could, you know, roam, you could have your barbecue the whole night. I mean, you know, there were nice places over there. They looked expensive, but a house would be the thing. And that, that's, you know, that's something I was looking into a couple years ago, but I stopped. And I stopped maybe because I didn't feel like I deserved it. You know, I can tell you all, give you a whole bunch of other excuses that this happened, that's happened, whatever. But no, it was, it was, it was me. I just felt like I probably didn't deserve it, and I gave up. That's what it was. It's like I have to pick it up again. You know, the thing that jumped, that jump started me to start looking for a house was uh, Terrell's son. I, <laughs> I saw Terrell's son, and he, I think his son is like maybe 21, 22, something like that. But he had a house. He was living with his girlfriend and his little baby, little bambino. They got a house. I'm like, and I'm like, really? You got a house? <laughs> like, I remember you when you were just knee high, and now now you got your own house, and you got your girl, and you got your baby. It's like, and I'm looking at myself, like, what am, what the hell am I doing? You know? Yeah, so. So those were the past couple. Oh, oh. So one more thing. So, so I so I, I finished doing the walk, and then uh, I hop back in my car and I find Western again. I'm going down Western, and this white lady pulls up next to me in the car in her car, and she she's like she's motioning me like she's not waving per se, but she's trying to get my attention, 
And so we're at a red light, and then she, she, uh, I rolled down my window, I turned down my music, and she was like, hey, I'm not trying to pick you up or anything, but uh, I just wanted to say you look real, what did she say? You look real nice, like you look, you look like you have it going on or something like that. So she was just observing me from behind, like she was behind me, like to my right behind me, and she's observing me. I was like, oh, thank you, like I appreciate that. She wasn't like the most beautiful woman, you know, she wasn't totally unattractive, but she, I wasn't, you know, I'm not that attracted. I mean, I don't know. I don't know what to say about this. But she was white, though. She was a white woman. She's approaching me. She's not that attractive. But she, at least she was getting my attention. Like, she, something in her felt like she just had to approach me, right? She just had to talk to me. The sun is, like, totally blocking everything. <laughs> I'm about to turn that vision back. I just wanted you, I just wanted to, you guys to see my face, see my eyes. Anyway, so she's talking to me. I'm going to turn it back. And she's saying that to me. And then I just turn and like, you know, like after I say thank you, I didn't say anything else. And to be honest, I didn't feel like saying anything else because, again, I wasn't that really attracted to her. But in hindsight, like we drove on. In hindsight, I should have just I should have said, hey, you want to, you know, I had some drinks in the car. I had just bought some drinks. It was hard. Mike's hard lemonade. Right. I could have been like, uh, hey, you want you want to have a drink? You know, you want to have a drink with me? Like, I should have just pulled over. I should have said, hey, you want to pull over and talk? And we could have just talked. Like, I could have just, um, what's the word I'm looking for? We could have just had a conversation, you know? It doesn't always have to be about sex, you know, because that's what we think about. Oh, look at this girl. She's hitting on me. Even though she said she wasn't hitting on me, that's probably what she was doing. And I should have just talked to her. I could have gave her a hug, at least. <laughs> at the very least a hug we could have shared these drinks and we could have just chatted but i didn't do that you know and in hindsight i i i felt bad about it like the more i thought about it the more um the matter i got not mad i don't want to say mad but i was a little pissed at myself because i'm like you're not connecting with anybody like right now like you know, I have my moral high ground that, uh, you know, I'm pro-black and I'm not going to date a white girl and this and that. And I need to stand on that. You need to stand on your principles. But it's like, I don't dislike people. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, we could we could have talked. We could have connected, you know. And uh, I let that go. I like, that was an opportunity. And I let that go. And, you know, so in hindsight, so I was a little bit pissed at myself. So I woke up the next morning and I watched a video that I had saved from, from Marnie. Marnie, the wingman, the wingwoman, the wingman, I think. And she was saying what five, the five things that uh, confident guys don't do. Like the, the guys who get all the girls. Like they're here, here are the, what alpha males do, what beta males do. Right? So I had to watch that video. And I watched that video like three times. Like I listened to it while I was getting ready that morning for work. And I listened to it three times. <laughs> and one of the things that uh, that, she, that she said confident guys don't do, they don't beat themselves up. They don't they don't bash themselves. You know, if they do something wrong, if they make a mistake, whatever. I was like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I don't need to bash myself because that's what I was doing the other day. Again, I you know, if it was like an attractive woman like Dorsey, Dorsey looked like a young Foxy Brown. Okay, when I met her, I met her last year on the beach. She had that red bikini. I could not take my eyes off her, but I couldn't. I had to. I, I couldn't like stare at her like a like a goofy, right? But um, she was gorgeous, man. And that, and I, I don't. I don't think I, I, I beat myself up or anything over that. I would have had I not got her number, because I did get her number. But the whole thing of it was, I played it cool. Like I didn't. I didn't approach her. She approached me eventually. It just so happened we were sitting next to each other. Like my blanket, I had my, um, not my blanket, my, my beach towel. I laid it right next to her little camp, her little uh, setup, right? Because cause she was in the water. She wasn't there. You know, there was another girl there who happened to be her niece. And, and so then when she did come out of the water, she came over there. She was, And they're, they're, they're both sitting right next to me. And that was, that, I thought that was so cool because she had made some, she had cooked some, uh, she made a salad. She made a chicken salad. And she had their, her niece and uh, three other little girls were there. And when I say little, they were probably like 14, maybe 13, 14. 
probably a little bit older, maybe. And so they didn't want to eat the chicken salad. And she was a little, she was a little ticked off at that. So she offered me, she was like, hey, would you like some of this chicken salad? And I was like, of course. <laughs> I was like, of course I would like to try your chicken salad. And, uh, you know, so we, now we started conversating. And right then and there, I knew, I was like, you cannot leave here without getting this woman's number. Can't. <laughs> He's like, or you would be pissed. You would be, you, you, I mean, you'd be useless to yourself and to, to the world at this point if you don't get this woman's number. And, you know, eventually uh, I did get her number. And the thing was, she had a guy. That, that was the crazy part. She was telling me, she was like, I am seeing somebody. <laughs> I was like, I was like, okay. <laughs> you know. And, uh, of course, that didn't go anywhere, but I share that story because it was, it was, I was connected with somebody and it was, it was like the minute I saw her in the water, like the minute I saw her, I was like, oh my God, like, who is this? I was like, how do I talk to this woman? How do I get to this woman? And it, it worked, like it played itself out, like everything played itself out without me really having to do a lot. I just, I was just there and I was present. And I wish I was a little bit more present with the, with the young uh, lady. I don't know how old she was. She looked like she might have been in her 40s. Uh, the, the young lady uh, in the car next to me, the white girl, the white woman <laughs> next to me. And she's telling me that, hey, you look like you look like you're, you're doing it or however she said it. But she was like she was complimenting me and I'm just driving, you know. And I don't know how you know how to explain that. You know, obviously she she might have she was attracted to that. I saw a woman the other day, just yesterday. It was it was a guy it was a guy driving and she was sitting in the passenger seat. But I'm looking at her. I'm like, oh, like she looks awesome. And I'm seeing this from behind, right? I'm driving like behind them, like to the you know a little bit behind them, to the right or to the left. And um, that's I was like, oh, so I was like, this is how the that woman saw me. Cause she was behind me, like I didn't understand, like yeah, like what what prompted her to see me like that. But but I, that made sense. It made sense yesterday when I saw that young lady with her guy in the car. Um, so I said all this to say, thirty minutes. We're at thirty two minutes. I said all this to say that I am lonely. <laughs> I'm very lonely. And I wish I could talk to somebody. I wish I could just sit down and talk to somebody. But but it, it's like if I do it, it feels like I'm whining. I don't want to whine or, or complain. And that's not, I don't want that. But at the same time, I need to tell or they need to talk to somebody. It's just, I don't know. So somebody understands, I guess. I would like somebody to understand. Um. Uh, Maybe over two years ago. I think it's been four years since I've been divorced. After I got divorced, uh, I would be in Hyde Park a lot. Like I would hang out in Hyde Park, mainly at Corner Fifty Two. Oh, can I turn? Damn, I should have turned. Mainly at Corner Fifty Two, and I met a, a young lady named Isisia there. Isisia was probably in her thirties then. I think maybe she's like thirty-five now, maybe thirty-four, thirty-five, something like that. She's getting older, but she was cute. And uh, me and her started hanging out. And before her, it was like Sharon. I think before her, was I was, I was trying to hang out with Sharon. Sharon was the girl who, who told me I'm, I'm too nice. <laughs> she told me, ah, like, you know, nice guy, right? I was offended. So, you know, me and her, Sharon hung out. We had a good time for a little while, but it didn't last long. And there was a few others that I've talked about. Maybe one or two, but... But Isisia, we started hanging out like as friends. That's how we started hanging out, like if like like we were friends. Not not it wasn't a romantic thing. So it got to a point where she would be sleeping over my house constantly. I would have my air mattress out. She'd sleep on my air mattress, or sleep on my couch. Uh, we'd watch, you know, we'd Netflix and chill basically. The thing was, it wasn't romantic. Even though I probably wanted it to be romantic, I wasn't pushing for it either. I, I didn't see Isisia as like uh, a romantic interest if we wanted you know if she, if she wanted to have sex yeah then we would have had sex but I wasn't really pushing for it I didn't push for it like until like maybe until a year a year into it 
And by this point, she's looking at me as a friend, not as a romantic interest. Like maybe she, maybe that could have been from the get-go, from the very beginning. And that's how you're supposed to do it. You're supposed to show your interest in the beginning. Damn, I shouldn't have took Cicero. <laughs> so it's like, it's a whole lot of traffic because we're at the airport. Cicero is busy. Should have went past. I should have took, I should have went to Central. Anyway. So I would vent, I would vent with ICC. Like she would listen to me. And that was good. That was good for me. Like I needed somebody to talk to. I needed somebody to vent to. The the problem is women don't like that. Like you become a girlfriend at that point, or you or the gay friend. You know you're not gonna be you no know, romantic interest. You can't tell women everything. The girl that you're interested in, like like Dorsey, I was talking about. You can't tell her everything. Can you tell any girl anything? And this this is my dilemma. It's like I can't just I can't just vent and be me and just talk. Like I'm doing on this video. This is why I'm doing the video. Because like I feel like I got nobody to talk to. You know, when you're talking to the guy, they don't want to hear you whine and complain. Oh, you're being a bitch. Like, it's like, uh, I just, I, you know, I would love to share with people. And my sister, it's like, right away, she's ready to bite my head off over something. <laughs> that I know it was real. Like, I know. I know my mom. Like, I know she procrastinated. I know that's what she did. <coughs> <clears throat> and I'm just tired. I'm getting more tired. I'm losing weight. My, you know, my health, my diabetes is kicking my ass. I've been trying, like I said, I've been fighting the uphill battle. I haven't given up, but it's like, it's rough. Because unlike most diabetics who are big and overweight, I'm losing weight. This is how my dad died. My dad just became very frail and you know, he wasted away over the years. When my grandma's funeral was like what five or six years ago. And when you know, when he showed up, when we saw him, like he was like he was so frail. Like a shadow of the person he used to be. My dad was you know, he used to run and jog, you know, he was athletic. And I don't want to go that way. But what choice do I have? I'm trying to, you know. I'm trying to do what I can to reverse. I got to reverse diabetes. To reverse diabetes, I'm going to have to change my whole diet plan. I'm going to have to do a cleanse. All this stuff. Like, it's a lot of stuff I got to do. Oh, my God. This It's a whole traffic accident. I can't show you. I can't show it to you, but it's bad. This guy, I mean, this guy basically ran into a wall. Whew. I can't move the phone because once I move the phone, I have to, I'm, as I'm driving, I can't. There's no way I can put it back in without crashing myself. <laughs> so I just have to take my word for it. It was, it was a bad accident. It looked like an SUV. It looked like he ran into the wall, to the airport wall here. So this is what I'm dealing with for the past couple of days. Like I just gave you a synopsis of what, what I've done. Just normal stuff. And it's not like I'm depressed. It's not, it's not depression because I've been depressed. I, I've, I've done so many mental tricks to, to deal with depression, you know, so many things to, to fight it off. And some days are better than others, you know. It's not so much a depression thing, it's just a realization, like, I'm so, that I'm alone, man. When I was married, I had somebody who had my back, and I had her back. I had her back. It's not like I didn't have her back. But for whatever reason, she, you know, she got tired, like most women do. And, you know, they find some other guy. I'm sure that's what happened. She probably met him at the gym, some big buff dude, I'm sure. I can never know for sure. I think his name was David. And I know that she had a brother named David. I overheard I overheard her talking on the phone when we were, you know, when we were in our throes. <laughs> and she she was talking to somebody. It could have been Dawn, it could have been somebody, some other woman, but she was talking about somebody. And I think she mentioned the guy's name was David. Like I said, my wife didn't know how to whisper. I'll never know. I will never know. But it was like after after that, like after getting divorced and, you know, red pill. I had been red pilled. <laughs> I didn't know anything about red pill. Yeah, the movie The Matrix, right? That comes from the movie The Matrix. But the red pill really is about men and women. It's about hypergamy, men and women how we interact to each, to each other, 
and how women just can't be trusted. Like, they just you can't trust them. You can't put all your eggs in one basket. And that's, that's pretty much what Red Pill is telling you. Like, women only, only function off of, um, what is it? This is the word I'm looking for. I, I said hypergamy, but it has more to do with, like, you as a producer, you as a uh, provider. That's what it deals with. You know, it doesn't matter that, that if you're a good guy or not, and if you're faithful, like, none of that matters to them. They just care that you're a provider. And that, oh, and that, that you, sh like, you excite them. Like, you have to, you have to not, not entertain them, but you have, they have to keep having fun with you. They have to be happy. They're looking for you to fulfill their happiness. Now, that's not how anyone should operate, but that's what they're looking for. And so soon when they, as soon as they get bored, they start looking for the next guy. And that's just how it is. So you, in your manly frame, in, in your manly frame, <laughs> you have to, you know, you have to be stern and, and stone-faced and, you know, not care. You know, you're not supposed to care about women and you're not supposed to have deep feelings for them and all this stuff. That's how you're going to get by because that's that's the guys that they go after, right? They go after the 20%, 10 to 20% guys who act like that, who really don't give a F about them, you know? That's who they go after. But as soon as you, you give your heart to them and whatever, they smash that shit. And so, uh, so I'm here learning about Red Pill now, newly divorced guy. Not really connecting with the women. And on a romantic level, because I have plenty of female friends. <laughs> I have plenty of female friends. I used to see it was just one, right? But uh, no romantic. Like, I didn't hook up with anybody for like two years. After I got divorced. And it's not like I wasn't trying. It took like two years, dude. But, you know... This is, I talk to I can't talk to anybody about this stuff. It's like you know, it makes me look like a punk or a wimp or something. It's like no nah, man. It's like I just this is what it is. I'm out here. I'm a thorough dude, man, I, and I'm not a punk. I'm not weak, you know. But I, I don't know relationships that good. I haven't had any real deep relationship. That my that was my deepest relationship was with uh, Jeanette. And, you know, I'm shocked that we were married for 12 years. <laughs> you know, my mom told me a story um, about me and my dad, her and my dad, and how she tried to have a conversation with him just over something regular. And he, like, he's like, he snapped back at her. And she, she, she said from that point on, she didn't try to talk to him anymore. You, you get that? So it's like for 13 years, they were married for 13 years. So, and they didn't really talk like, like husband and wife. I can't imagine that. Like, there wasn't a day that I didn't talk to my wife. You know? She didn't. She said she didn't talk to him anymore after that. So how was that? How did that go? And this is what me and my sister grew up in. And, and we, you know, it's normal for us to see, oh, my mom and dad don't really talk. But it never occurred to me that they don't talk. They talk to us, maybe. Or maybe my mom talked to us. But my dad wasn't hardly there. It's no wonder he... he Went. I mean, he was already cheating, by you, mind you. <laughs> he was already, you know, kicking it with other women, you know, by that by that point. But it was like, this, you know, my mom didn't help. She didn't make it any easier. <coughs> and she was young. She was 20, 21, 22, something like that. So it's just not like she knew a whole lot. But... It's like, how would you, how could you have a relationship like that? You can't. And we grew up in that. It's a, it's no wonder that me and my sister can't have healthy relationships with, with the opposite sex. You know? I talk to my wife every day. Like, I can't imagine that. Like, you know, every now and then, we would argue. We used to argue a lot. You know, that's why I ended up going to counseling and, you know, learning that I had anger issues and all that shit. But... I talk to people. You know, I have friends because I talk to people. I don't just... I'm not just some... I'm not a monk <laughs> in a cave somewhere. I have friends. You know, I have good friends. Not just anybody. I don't just hang around anybody. I am a Scorpio. I'm very particular. You know? My sister, same thing. 
So, again, is it the midlife crisis thing? I don't know. I mean, that's what it kind of feels like. Oh, my God, these cars. I see so many accidents. Not every day, but I drive for a living. And I have to deal with all these drivers, truck drivers, etc. On the job. But the traffic, man. Just dealing with traffic and how many people, how bad people are driving. It's horrible. <laughs> it's horrible. Anyway, this we're at 45 minutes now. Again, I don't expect anybody to see this right away. Maybe it'll be a year from now, maybe two. Maybe I'll be gone, long gone. Maybe, I'm, maybe I'll be still kicking 10 years from now. Who knows? But I just had to get this off my chest. I'm, I am alone out here, and I don't want to be alone. A pro black and everything, you know. I wanted, I want, I should have pulled over for the white girl. <laughs> I should have pulled over for the white. We could have just talked to her, or maybe it would have went further. Who knows? I wouldn't have stopped it. I wouldn't have said, "Oh no, I'm not gonna sleep with you." I have principles. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. You know, I'm just alone out here, man. I just feel so freaking alone. Dion's leaving. Dion and his wife will be moving at some point. They're, they're looking to move to Atlanta, Georgia. To Georgia, somewhere down south. They're going to move. That's going to be one of my best friends gone. Another best friend gone because Ian's in California. We talked We talked recently. He didn't seem happy. I don't know what's going on. But I mean, he didn't say anything was wrong. But again, this is what not what men do. We don't talk. We don't tell each other stuff. Deep stuff. We don't get that deep. We just, we just stay surfacey. Everything's on the surface until until we blow our fucking brains out. <sighs> Stupid. It's all foolish. I'm looking at the expressway. It's a lot of traffic. I don't camera. It's moving, so it's moving from there. But but I'm looking I'm looking to the right right now, and it's just traffic. Now I'm early. It's seven twenty one now, approximately. I don't have to be at work till late, and I'm only what two miles away now if that but I had to get up early so I could do this video so I could remember everything because I had woke up at 4 I could not go back to sleep and I was thinking about all this stuff and how I would do this and how I would share this and you know normally if I was doing this on Instagram I would have did a 5 minute video and I would have had to have some bullet points or whatever so I could get this off my chest and talk about it but um, this is going on YouTube or whatever other thing is going to go on. Who knows? And, uh, you know, maybe somebody will find it. Maybe a friend of mine will find it. Maybe they'll find some insight in it. I don't know. But I'm, I'm just tired of being by myself. I'm tired of fighting this way by myself. I'm, try, I'm tired of doing everything by myself. I went to the movies by myself. <laughs> I did, you know what I'm saying? All those things I did, that walk I did by myself. I'm tired of doing everything myself all the time. I would like a lovely lady right next to me, but I, I guess that's not in the cards. <laughs>